I'll call this meeting to order for November the 17th, 2020. Resolve that the agenda for the November 3rd, 2020 regular meeting of council and the November 10th, 2020 Committee of the Whole be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the regular council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, moving down to uh, 6, 6.1. Resolve the building permits 9720 through 9820 with a total estimated value of $93,000 be received. Moved by Council Morio, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Resolved that the minutes from the September 24, 2020 Swan Lake Watershed meeting be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor White. Just uh, brought back to mind uh, seeing uh, ex Councillor Bob being the new chair of the uh, Swan Lake Watershed District. Uh, I just think it would be appropriate if a note came from your office, your worship, uh, condolence on the passing of his father from from our council. Okay. I can send him a message, but I can send him a note Thank you. All council there. Anything on that, Councilor Delorier? I will try and answer any questions I can, but I don't sit on the executive, only the right. larger board, but I can try and answer any that I can. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? carried. Resolve of the letter dated November 5th, 2020 from the Association for Community Living be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, this is uh, thanking us for our ongoing commitment to the association. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Sorry? There's a letter. And the minutes. Just noting, we, we can accept them. I'll move that we accept as the correspondence advising the, the council, Councillor White. So oh. They're two distinct <clears throat> items. Right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Result of the letter from Swan Lake Watershed District be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Sorry, I was glad I had there. I didn't realize that was two. Okay, 6.5. Result of the letter from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Northwest Region, dated November the 5th, 2020, regarding municipal policing agreement, second quarter invoice be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor White. So just a small typo on the report on the second page from the RCMP. They still have uh, Julie Fothergill as our CIO, so maybe a note advising them of the change. But the eminent change and the present change, I guess. Okay. Give Thank you. That. I know that there's still uh, correspondence coming to the uh, former mayor, Mackenzie, as well, so it takes time. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. 7.1. <clears throat> Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Gray. Seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Any questions? No? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 721, resolved that the September 2020 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by 
Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 722, resolve that the October 2020 Protected Services Report be received as information. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, uh, Council's reports. I'll start with Councilor Wintoni, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I have nothing to report. Okay. Councilor Morio. Um, I attended our committee, the whole meeting last Tuesday. And as a result of that, um, myself and uh, Mr. Poole, uh, we've been visiting a number of businesses that are potentially going to be affected with the intersection uh, improvements of 1083, which is going to be discussed further down the uh, agenda. So uh, I've been busy with that and prepping um, some preparation stuff for um, continuing negotiations that have been delayed by one week. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Friesen. Um, I'm going to be last week with Patty and me. Acting CAO Patty and uh, Lana from Hall discussing a uh, July 1st grant application. They need it in by the end of November, so that's why we got together. We have no idea what's going to happen in July, but we'll uh, go ahead and for some money, of course. If it goes, it goes. Um, and then uh, I was at the highways meeting about the intersection, and the mistletoe magic evening could possibly be canceled. Um, our chairperson has contacted some health authorities, and they have told her that we could possibly be in big trouble because we can't control how many congregate. We wanted everyone to stay in vehicles, but who's going to say everybody's going to stay in the vehicle and you get more than eight people wandering around together and we could be in trouble. So I think we're just going to put lights up and not call it an evening opening, just have the lights on and let the room warm in the week. Okay. Um, that's all I I think that people are still looking forward to the decorating, but if you can't have a, a big, you know, a lot of things are already decorated. They already have the lights up. It's just a matter of we could probably go through and turn them on now. And okay. is there? I really hope we can do that. If we don't have the big evening of uh, drive-through, at least we'll have the lights and people can come and go and say peace. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Oh. Um, well, I did give me the full meeting, so I won't report on it. It's, it's got its own minutes and so on for reporting. Um, I did, I think at that meeting, mentioned the RISE meeting on November 4th, which you also attended, Your Worship. Um, we, a number of things arose out of that in terms of both our request to have consideration of how tax incentives work or whether they work, and our request for a meeting, which I think is now scheduled for uh, next Monday. That's right. Um, and so uh, that's, I think, good news. Um, I, I note that I've sent to uh, all my colleagues on council Mitchell report on uh, the issues that dealt with in recreation. Um, I, I, I do commend one, I have three things I want to commend. One is Councillor White you know, did a posting, you know, it wasn't his, but it was a good posting on to wearing masks uh, about uh, the course, but it's it's quite uh, it's more funny and effective in explaining why people should wear masks, notwithstanding um, the uh, mayor of the uh, the reeve of the arm of your shoulder. Um, and the other two, um, I, I the Legion managed to take off or get off the, the Veterans Day as much as you could with the, the restrictions, and and kudos to that. Uh, you know, it's, it was a tough situation. I, I'm hoping next year, of course, we can have a much expanded um, service. Um, I, I will say that there was one thing that was a little frustrating to me, and I know 
Tinkleman and Mr. Poole, um, it appears that our recycling people traveled around on the morning of November the 11th picking up uh, recycling. Uh, I was, uh, to say the least, unimpressed with that. Firstly, I, I don't think it's an emergency, it's a necessary piece, and I, I actually don't think we needed to have anything open on that date. But secondly, um, it, it, it confounds me how we would contract out and have somebody um, do that. Uh, the other is November the 16th, was Louis Real Day. Um, we didn't do anything here, but I mentioned it for everybody. Um, it was the day in which Louis Real was, um, of course, executed in 1885. That's it. Great. Thank you. Council uh, Same as all the councilors who are moving to the council meeting, I had some in depth discussions there. Uh, just coming up tomorrow, I think, for the community to realize that uh, Your Worship and myself will be meeting with, uh, on Thursday rather, with the Vice President of Human Resources for PMH relative to medical professional recruiting, not just doctors. We're looking at how to help out if the, if the town can help through recruiting of nurses and physiotherapists in addition to the doctors. So um, I'm looking forward to that meeting with Mr. Gadger. Uh, all of us have regular meetings uh, via email because of the, uh, the concerns that we have. And obviously hiring a new CAO is a very important thing for our community. Shared services, and I would like to thank Council Delore and the rest of his team for leading us in that. It's, uh, it's taking a lot of all our time. A thought that came to my mind, and I throw it out as a seat, as I'm sure we can discuss, I certainly wasn't a novel thought, but I see in one community that the council sent out of 10 dozen donuts to, to, the, to the primary care clinic, to the hospital, the personal care homes. Councillors, if they wish to, could put their own cash in and do that. 20 bucks each, we could send donuts over, wishing the frontline workers uh, good health. The other thing I wanted to compliment uh, the Minister of Conservation. Uh, Mr. Peterson right now, he's constantly putting ads on, which I think are have two wonderful uh, you know, side products. One, they're, they're identifying people who have, that specifically who have broken the law relative to night lighting. Now, our community has a lot of hunters here, so hunter safety is a big issue. And right now, in most of Manitoba, hunting by night lights is absolutely illegal. And uh, I want to compliment the government for making that you know, apparent to all of us. They're putting six vehicles confiscated, et cetera. Also, it's also good for me to know that our government is doing this. And I think the third one, I think it's important for the perpetrators, is that the right word, Councillor, for the bad guys to realize, holy smokes, this is happening in Arbor, it's happening in St. Rose, it's happening in Dock, it's happening in Swan River, so they're putting the communities. So I think it's a very proactive thing on, on behalf of government. And uh, I appreciate that they're doing it. I hope they continue to do that. And that's it, sir, thank you. Welcome to report. Okay. Uh, for me, I also attended the uh, meeting uh, with the uh, Highway 83 and 10 intersection, and uh, we will hear a little bit more about that uh, right away. Um, uh, some of the options that have also received a lot of input since we shared it out there to the community uh, and people's opinions about that. So uh, we'll hear more about that shortly. Um, as Councillor Gray said, Remembrance Day service. Uh, held last Wednesday, uh, my family and I attended at the Cenotaph here in Swan River. Um, it was it was well done, and I thought it, it actually kind of reminded me when we were kids. When we used to go to the Cenotaph all the time. It wasn't at the, held in the hall, and uh, it reminded me of that. And, and I certainly hope, as Councilor Gray says, that in 2021 that we can continue on doing similar to that, and also at the hall for everyone, young and old, to attend and uh, and. and, and uh, pay our respects to all those that have served uh, for our freedoms. Um, last night, uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation held uh, our uh, meeting. Um, it was, the intention was uh, to have it by video, but that failed, so we had it by teleconference, which is quite interesting how to uh, chair a meeting by teleconference. But anyways, we made our, our way through it, and I'll be sharing with everybody the information from that meeting here in the next couple of days once I have uh, our draft um, 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 uh, minutes and all the information else that can be shared with you. Um, uh, Councillor Gray or Councillor White talked a little bit about uh, the doctor recruitment fund and, and what that looks like. 
So the committee, I've spoke with uh, the rest of the committee uh, as far as uh, who is with the uh, doctor group and all that, and we're trying to sort out a date when we can actually meet to discuss that still, that this COVID thing has created some problems with that. So uh, just so that you know that that's, that's coming. Uh, and we're hoping maybe in the next couple of weeks maybe we can do that by Zoom or something like that because that's completely outstanding and, and we need to deal with that. Um, on the uh, doctor or the clinic report uh, or study that was done, um, that is yet uh, outstanding and that's coming. Um, it's a decision that um, we'll either have to do it all by individual councils or as a G4, but I think it's probably going to end up being presentation done to each of the uh, municipalities like in a, in a camera session obviously just to let everybody hear what that looks like and, and what our intentions are as far as our in involvement with the, the clinic expansion and, and, and all the details of that so um, and I guess that's basically it for me Councilor Gray. So you your worship to Councilor Gray just remind me when our, our process bylaw is Coming back to our procedures level. Procedures level. Um, well, we discussed it last cow meeting, and we talked to have a discussion. Right, so we have to the whole yeah, thing. it will have to. Yeah, because, because there are a couple of things that arise from tonight that, that I think we need to discuss. Okay. So I'll send those to you. Okay. Separate. You have this. Okay. And I guess maybe last night, uh, Councilor Gray brought up about masks and all that. And, and you know, we're, we're going through a tough time, you know, countrywide, provincially, and, and, you know, in our own municipalities. But, you know, we have to do our part to prevent the, the spread of, or even receiving um, the, the virus. And, and it's tough, and it's tough on everybody, young and old, our kids in school, our community people, businesses, uh, our elderly. Uh, it touches everybody and, and we have to continue doing whatever we can do to prevent the spread of this disease and or this uh, pandemic and um, and uh, wearing our masks is, is just one small part of, of the whole thing so I encourage everyone to continue doing so on a regular basis until we get through all this 731 result of the acting CAO report be received Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Uh, any discussion on that? Ms. Hinkleman? No. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 8.1. Resolve the Town of Swan River submit an application to the Municipal Enforcement Support Program. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, Ms. Ingleman, did we have a uh, talk with our bylaw officer as to what his feelings are on that? Uh, yeah, I had a chat with him today, and uh, we've got a slide that I sent him the application they asked staff already had to get trained so we got him in the queue to get trained on that so yeah it's building to get the training in case you need to cross that bridge okay uh just before we let you speak um if mr Poole or miss hinkleman can uh, maybe uh, for those that are maybe watching us tonight not knowing exactly what this means can you might kind of give some cold version to uh what we're talking about in this resolution so the province, um, may have seen some press releases, the province um, is beefing up um, enforcement there. It's a program, uh, municipalities can apply, can apply, which we did last week, um, to the first intake to receive funds um, to help with uh, hiring people to do the provincial enforcement. Um, and they will be offered some training as well. So we said we put an application in, in the first intake and we'll just wait to hear and see if we're one of the communities selected to receive some funding um, to um, help us here locally with um, provincial enforcement of the public health order. Okay. Councillor White. 
uh, just I, I believe there are 46 municipalities already applied for funding through that program, and uh, it appears to be accepted by most people within Manitoba. Okay. A wonderful task. Councilor Gray, did oh, you have something? I, I, no, I, I was trying to figure out what my colleague was thinking. Okay, well, uh, we're all kind of wondering the same thing, too. Okay, so. okay. <laughs> okay all in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 8.2. Whereas Manitoba Infrastructure MI has presented to the Town of Swan River with proposals for PTH 10 and 83 intersections improvements. Whereas the proposal includes option A consisting of a controlled intersection and option B consisting of a roundabout intersection. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River supports option B configuration of a roundabout for the proposal PTH 10 and PTH 83 intersection improvement. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor DeLorean. Um, yeah, this has generated quite a, I don't want to say controversy, but a, a lot of opinions uh, back and forth, both in person and online, since the town put this out, uh, the different proposals. Um, and I guess it's been 13 years since the town originally brought this forward to uh, to Manitoba infrastructure and uh, nobody says the wheels of government move fast but but here we are um, and I, I know one of the biggest concerns that's been brought forward to me is why can't we just have uh, the turn signal just a, a signal and the answer we've gotten time and time again we, we've asked the same question that the public is asking we've asked it to M MIT or MI now I guess and they do not feel that that uh, would increase safety. The, the, the two proposals we have are what they're willing to do based on our request for, for the concerns we have. And I guess to, to outline, I, I was actually surprised because this is probably one of the issues that in all my elections and all my years on council, I've heard most about this intersection and how dangerous it is for turning left when you're facing a lineup of cars wanting to turn left the other way and you can't see what's coming in the other lane. I, I was surprised to hear that some people didn't know that that was, was an issue or didn't feel that that was an issue because at least from, from my experience, it's been brought forward to me and I'm sure to you guys as well a number of times. Um, so having said that, if, if we're forced to make a choice between these two options, uh, you know, I understand that there's a learning curve with the, with the traffic circle, but it has the least amount of impact on the surrounding businesses as far as access to their businesses. The, the option A, when, when you, you're basically on both, both directions, narrowing yourself down to single lane, you're making three lane, two, two, tra two traffic lanes and a turning lane, both directions. You're, you're creating quite a bottleneck there that uh, you're, you're gonna either back up traffic during busy times or, uh, and just, it does, just causes a lot of other issues as far as building access. So in my mind, if these are the two options that we're, we're allowed to choose from, the roundabout still to me is most appealing. Councilor White. In, in the bit I've read and uh, talked to the people who have traveled, well-traveled, these things are all over the world. Uh, big trucks all over the world. And the stuff that we have from MIT says combines can go through there, I think without the header, but they can take their headers off. Large B trains can go through there without a problem. So it's safer, it's faster, it holds the big big equipment. Why wouldn't we go for it? Um, so as you know, there's an additional report um, attached to your agenda of the uh, feelings of the businesses that we went and saw. Um, but further to Councilor Delorier's uh, thought and to a lot of the questions where people were saying, why not just put a left turn lane on there without doing anything? Um, through the number of years, MI has done some traffic counts through there and it's proven that there's sufficient traffic volumes there to require two lanes. But if you cannibalize one of those lanes to make it into a, uh, a left turn lane, then there's insufficient volume in the remaining lane to take the volume of the traffic that's going through. So that's one of the reasons like why they just can't put a left turn signal on the existing standards now and why they would need to, if we want uh, 
chose the light standard version why they would have to add in the extra lanes and the barriers and stuff which has uh, negative consequences so, but as you can see in the uh, report um, a lot of the businesses that we polled and stuff like that are neutral um, some of them are strongly in favor of the roundabout um, because uh, it would the trade the traffic signals with the cement uh, meridian that extends a significant distance east or west of them um, of the intersection would have some very negative effects on their business um, so they're uh, very concerned about that which it wouldn't have those effect uh, with the, the roundabout that's there so um, so basically there's pros and cons for both uh, MI indicates that both work well um, I've personally experienced both types of intersections and they do both work well once people get to know how they are utilized and how to work them so and there's some confusion out there because uh, there's different designs of roundabouts um, there are two lane roundabouts and single lane roundabouts and this is a single lane roundabout versus there's confusion out there that with two lane roundabouts when you're in the inside lane you can go around a circle a few times trying to get the exit lane out but uh, we don't have that issue in that design here so um, and yes uh, there's been some bad design roundabouts that are insufficient size as was mentioned um, by the city of Regina where they um, created some there that is not big enough for some of the heavy equipment that goes through there so it, it is creating some uh, bad negativity um, on the feelings of a roundabout um, also we're also aware that uh, the province is also planning some additional roundabouts in the province, like you know, the corner uh, or intersection of Highway 16 and Number One um, is going to be a roundabout. Uh, there's thought process and putting feelers out for uh, the intersection of Highway 5 and 68 by St. Rose as a roundabout, and along with uh, the Predator Highway and Number Two Highway as a roundabout. So, so there's some increases on there. So there's a trend to go through there, but like I said. Um, most people that we've talked, they're, they're neutral about it. Um, they feel both will work. Um, but uh, we, uh, as a counselor, stuff, I, I have to look beyond uh, just the intersection. I have to look up to what that intersection does as consequences of traffic further up the street, how it affects the local businesses in that area, things like that. So, um, so that's one of the things that we need to uh, consider in our decision. So, as, uh, as MI reported, um, they're looking to go ahead with that this summer. So, um, and once they deal with this intersection, it will be very unlikely that they'll be entertaining any type of further adjustments or tweaking to that intersection. So, we need to put some consideration into this as to long term effects of what it's going to be. Sounds great. Thank you. I started by saying that I'm one of those people who will surprise Councilor Gloria because I don't see that as a particularly big issue. I've never even come close to having an accident and I can't imagine anybody actually doing that. Um, having said that, um, I, I would support the roundabout anyway. I think it's a much more efficient way of dealing with the whole traffic problem in a busy intersection. It's, it's just more logical than stop signs and and traffic lights anyway uh, and I, I know it does take some time to get used to but once you're used to it quite candidly it's going to be a much more popular thing as time goes on except in large settings where you actually have to worry about um, about control of traffic um, and that's not our problem um, the so I, I don't want any calls from people to tell me that they think <laughs> that I'm crazy, that, that there are, that is a dangerous intersection. I don't, I mean, it may be, I just, I don't see it personally. Um, there was something else I was going to mention, but I've forgotten what it was, so I don't worship it. It's a debate can use. In any event, I would go with it. If we're going to do something there, oh, I, I know what it was. One of the things that was mentioned to us and that, that's important to know is that um, this will mean that, that um, the government will be bringing, the Manitoba government will be bringing in paid crew and so on, and presumably we can get them to, either we can piggyback with them from that, or they can do the um, part from the tracks to the corner of 83. So hopefully we can get that done, um, and hopefully it will cost us even less. Okay, thank you. 
no other reason for your skin. Okay. And, and, and I, I don't know if we've ever anybody else mentioned it for, again, this is for anybody who's watching, that if we don't do the roundabout, um, the requirements were that it would take a significant amount of effort to get addition, the necessary additional land. There was no guarantee it would be done anytime soon or anytime at all. And so if we want to do it at all, the roundabout's the option that's available to us. And uh, if it's a safety concern, then we should do it. And I would do it whether or not it's a safety concern. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I don't know if you could I just want to add, I like the driven on the night. I don't think we're inventing the wheel. It's not that hard to drive around and on the road. Just have to pay attention. Okay. I think we're great. I wanted to comment, so I'll pass the chair to you, uh, Deputy Mayor and Tony. Accepted. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I intentionally wanted to get the information out uh, via Facebook or on our uh, web page, just so that the public had a chance to see what we were talking about tonight. Um, I've had some people call me uh, in support of either one or just leaving it the way it is right now, which has been uh, brought up that it's, it has been a, a safety issue. And MI's responsibility is to make sure they have safe intersections and, and provide safety on our highways. And it's not like they have just dripped this up overnight. This is a study that probably is, they've gone through and, and researched, they've done traffic counts, they were there. Uh, numerous different times in the last, uh, how many years, you said 13 years. Um, and they obviously see that there needs to be something done with the intersection. So we have been given two options for us to consider. At the end of the day, we could say, or pass uh, option B, but if MI decides, they could just say, you know what, we're not gonna go it that way. That was a recommendation from our council. They could still end up going with option one. Obviously, and, and I don't think they, they would, but that, that is the case. At the end of the day, when I look at the, the, between the two choices, it bothered me with the turning lane that it hindered some of the, uh, the, um, the opportunity for people to, to turn left prior to the intersection into some of those businesses. And that created a, a little bit of a problem, I think, for uh, people wanting to go in there. The roundabout answers that question, where they can actually take the roundabout and come back and go in there with quite ease. The other issue that I had and, and was brought to me was that if super bees or combines can go through this, and we were reassured of this, and, and Mr. Poole, I, you, you've done, uh, you've read this and, and, and been living in that world a lot longer than I have, but um, they have said that it, uh, super bees and combines and larger equipment can pass uh, easily through this roundabout. That's correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Even the presentation, uh, the head engineer, the lead engineer, stated that uh, the trucks that would have more trouble are actually the, the Tritum semi-trailers rather than the super leagues. Okay. And, 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 and before I let you go on that one, um, the, I don't know if it's important, but um, the, 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 the curb, I guess, on the inside of the circle, the roundabout, how high, like, do you know how high that it will be? Like, so if the larger things have to go through there, if it's C drills or anything that might need a little bit more space, is it going to be like, say, 12 inches, or, or do we even know what that might be? We, we don't right now. The drawings right now are preliminary designs. They still have to go through their detailed design uh, process. So all we have on these drawings is that the diameter of the roundabout will be 50 meters, roughly. That's, that's a big size when you when you put it on the ground. But they do not have any elevations, <clears throat> assuming just for an example that I have in the report, assuming a 2% grade on the roadway, 3% on the apron and 5% on the center button on the circle, you'd be roughly just under a meter higher at the center of the roundabout than the 
than the uh, outer edge of the roadway. And uh, the elevation difference between the outer edge of the roadway and the inner curb of the apron would be just under a foot. So, and thank, and thank you for uh, adding that because I think it's important for people to hear that, again, this is not something that was dreamt up overnight. They've done their research and, and, uh, and obviously know, as Council Morial says, that they're building more and more of these. And in fact, I think I was reading in a report that, that was given to us that um, the, a lot of municipalities or a lot of provinces are moving towards this and also American, uh, or, 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 the Americans are going through this as well as uh, creating more roundabouts because obviously they say that they're a lot safer. So, thank you. All right. Uh, anything fur further, Your Worship, or that's all your your thoughts? That's it for me. Thanks. All right. I will pass the chair back to you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, any further discussion? So all in favor of the resolution? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point one. Resolved that the council as follows be hereby approved for payment. General Counts checks number two six eight nine four to two six nine five two for a total of three hundred and eight thousand two hundred and fifty eight dollars and sixty two cents. Payroll accounts checks number 4754 to number 4760 for a total of $94,598.68. Direct deposit transfer in the amount of $65,875.96 for school taxes and direct deposit transfers in the amount of $7,892.71 and $9,736.98 for Swan Valley... What am I? I can. Employment training. Swan Valley Employment Training Program, our project funding, direct tra direct deposit transfer in the amount of two hundred seventy three thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars and sixty three cents for RCMP contract. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, check number two six nine zero seven. I thought, are we still paying for those services? Because I thought that was supposed to be all wrapped up into that individual's job description. We have to give notice. Okay. So this will be the end of that area. That's what I thought, I wasn't 100% sure. So, so, Councillor Friesen. I just wanted to ask Ms. Poole, I saw a check for ball breath. Did you ever talk to him about the lights on the swamp? Uh, no, I have not scheduled to to have an electrician look at the lights in the spot. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion on the resolution. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten one one result of financial statements for the ten months ending October thirty first, two thousand twenty, be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. Oh, Councilor Gray. Just want to check a few things, um, Mr. Kenita. As far as I can tell, um, our tax revenues are virtually bang on. That means everyone that we expect to do is pay their taxes. Is that accurate? Um, or is that just yeah. Well, the, we report on an accrual basis, so the taxes are recorded as revenue in, when they're uh, levied, not when people pay. So if you want to know how many people still need to pay, it's on the very first page, taxes on the roll, 576,000 is how much are still outstanding. So the tax lift, I think of the budget that is adjusted, is that what happened? We, the taxes that were levied are the same as what was budgeted, except for a slight rounding difference. Okay, so yeah, page three of 17, which is the, uh, the page that we're mostly looking at, which is the 
it looks to me like you're collecting most of our revenues that are taxes that we're expecting. Is that correct? I just want to make sure that was that. Yeah, the, the taxes that were levied are what we budgeted for at the start of the year, according to the, the municipal levies. The second thing is that we seem to have a shortfall of revenue of 342000 in other revenues. Do you know what that's made up of? Well, other, other revenues includes uh, the uh, contributions from other municipalities for shared services and so on. Um, okay, the penny just dropped. I figured it out. Thank you. Um, and in terms of expenses, it looks like we have a, a surplus. Uh, if anyone looked at the financial statements, they would see a $2.6 million surplus. But in point of fact, we have a number of large expenditures coming due in December. Is that correct? Like, for instance, fiscal services is showing we're only paying 13% of it, but we have to adjust that in December when we make all our payments. So that, uh, which will leave me, because it looks like fiscal recreation, which has some protective services, and we could pass a big check for that, are the ones where it seems that there's a bit of a reduction in public health. But we have large amount, or large, fairly large amounts coming in those items, is that correct? Uh, yes, we still have the debenture payments that are made at the end of the year and, and all the transfers to reserves. Perfect. And just, for the, just so that I'm clear, uh, because it, uh, you know, I'm always worried about this, as far as I can tell, with the adjustment we made, it now looks like we're going to be close to being on budget. Well, yes, that, that um, COVID funding from the federal government made a big difference as well, so. Yeah, obviously. Okay, thank you, that's it. And on some of the transactions, we also have been out there, including funding a few others that we have not done as well. Yeah. Uh, so having $576,000 in taxes unpaid, is that, is that, normal for for this point in time like one month after taxes are due or is that high uh, i can take a quick look at last year's okay i guess i'm just wondering if it's something we should be concerned about or if it, or if there's often that many people that pay them late there are a number of people that pay late yeah Are we waiting on you to answer that? Your person. Yeah. Or you could send something to Councilor Delorier later. Okay. okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. <clears throat> 13. Resolve the proceedings of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go to the committee and close the meeting to G. the... Section 11. Mr. Bilo. Oh, I did too. <laughs> Sorry. Resolve that, by, uh, resolve that bylaw number 13, 2020, being the bylaw of the town of Swan River, to close a public reserve, be read a second time. This has come forward, as we, we, we have dis, uh, discussed this, but... Um, we, this resolution is sitting here, so we have to deal with it um, because otherwise it sits on the books what, like for two years or something like that. So if council is, uh, I know that Councillor Wintoni uh, has, uh, I think, uh, declined on this, but we have it in our books, so basically uh, it's to uh, defeat it, to get it off the books, basically, right? Yeah, otherwise this will be those two years, so this right. then moves it off. Is this moment we're going to have the public hearing? Yes. Yeah. So we can get to have the public hearing done. I have no council went, or Deborah Mayor would tell me. Um, at this time, I do have to step away because this was brought forth by myself. So this, at this point, it's uh, um, an interest to me. And uh, please have it noted that I'm stepping away from this decision. Okay. Thank you. So we're holding on. 
we're going to have a public hearing. So we're not going to have a public hearing at all. It, it would have to be reintroduced as a bylaw number as, as first reading again. Exactly. Okay, we decided not to have a public hearing because uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni has uh, withdrawn. Withdrawn. Oh, okay. But it's in the book, so it's just outstanding. So yeah, just no, 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 that's fine. I, I just didn't, I, I, I was trying to figure it out because I was probably supposed to have a public hearing. Yeah. I, I know I'm not the most alert person. I thought maybe we'd done it sometime when I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> no, you're good. Some of them will buy fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, no. So, discussion? Of, oh, sorry. First. Oh, I didn't get one. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by uh, Councillor Gray. All in favor? In favor. <laughs> in favor. Opposed. Okay, it's defeated. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I, I had the vision of like, that exact thing happening. All of a sudden, we passed it without the public hearing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Deputy Mayor Antonio has uh, returned to the meeting. Resolve that pursuance to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have purchase services uh, discussion and personnel. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in com com uh, committee. 